Hello, good afternoon. It's Eel Fadal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the uh, European markets, end of day uh, market analysis. Okay, uh, along with others or several others, I think everybody will be asking the same question right now is when will this European short squeeze stop? Okay, uh, it's not even a more European short squeeze. It's more of a US um, uh, uh, short squeeze as well, but mainly it's Europe that's uh, triggering this uh, avalanche of stops being uh, and knocked out and obviously new highs being put in so let's try and um, uh, decipher let's try and understand as to what's happening here and uh, when will this short squeeze stop i think that's the question everybody should be asking right now okay now please do visit tradesignaler.com uh, and uh, gain your latest signals and market update from the leading providers and you can download the app from the uh, android and the apple app store okay now let's get to um the actual fundamentals first of all so overnight as we know china was negative so again that's a risk off scenario from my perspective we had the nikkei and the uh, hang seng certainly higher so uh, certainly a move there uh, that's impressive the FTSE finished up 0.7 dax 1.5 cac up by one percent and the euro stocks the same the u.s markets are trading positively at the moment but i think that will change okay and i'll explain in my u.s market video but not for now i'll try and give you an insight as to why but u.s market video will certainly cover it more Okay, uh, like I said, please do visit tradesingler.com. Uh, also visit cfds.com for your trading needs, specialist in spread betting and CFD brokerage. And it would be a crime not to take advantage of that 25% cash bonus offer for new trading accounts. Those that are interested, send me an email, I'll get that applied. Okay, right, let's see exactly where we are and where we stand. Okay, so in terms of the news, uh, uh, the latest news really is all about oil with the drawdown in uh, the inventories, certainly a potential bullish signal. But you can see here, that the market already factored that in and that uh, resistance zone around that 49 to 50 dollar level certainly remains a key psychological barrier and it's very hard to to move higher based on uh, without any real fundamental basis i mean we do need fundamentals here folks we're holding this technical pattern between the uh, uh, the 47 to 50 dollars so we're oscillating between there whether or not we're building a base is a different story altogether daily chart on the chart of oil uh, you can certainly see that 50 dollars certainly remains a problem now Given the fact that we moved from a pivot low of 32, almost, I mean, almost double the uh, price of oil by almost 70% so far. So very impressive, but we need solid fundamentals. Now, in terms of economic data, economic data, economic data this morning, overall net net positive. You can't argue to the downside, really. Uh, you had uh, consumer confidence survey, you had IFO business climate current assessment expectations all coming in more or less stronger than expected helping but that was offset by weaker industrial data and industrial sales industrial orders and trade balance data as well from the uh, italian uh, uh, economy uh, you also had zew survey out of uh, chf um, so again that was certainly uh, positive uh, other than that we had weaker us data obviously hawkish rhetoric as well so that should certainly keep the markets under pressure okay right uh, that certainly seems to be the scenario uh, in terms of economic data stronger german data versus weaker italian uh, data that's uh, again germany is the powerhouse already folks but my uh, main concern oh, actually one second i realize that okay yeah i've got a trade on the euro that's certainly higher having said that talking about trades i've actually been stopped out multiple times uh, overnight and this morning on my euro stock short nasdaq short s p short uh, i think a footsie short as well no footsie short still active actually footsie short still active but yes, multiple stopouts. I was actually 190 odd points at the start of the week, and I'm down now. I'm down to 50 or 60 odd, if I can think, if I can recollect correctly. But yes, uh, certainly stopped out on this uh, short squeeze, epic short squeeze, impressive short squeeze. Stop losses in place, folks. That's all I can say. Stop losses in place. If I'm wrong, I'll be stopped, and then I'll have to reassess. Okay, right. Uh, talking about reassessing, let's start to reassess the technical backdrop. Let's see exactly where this, when, and where this short squeeze will stop. Okay, daily chart of the euro stocks, the move higher really is uh, really impressive to say the least, but we are into that Fib 61 to 75% resistance zone. Okay, yes, we do have an unfilled gap at 3,120. Can we really close that gap mm, on the back of Greece? Now, having said that, there has been an interesting, uh, interesting comment. Now, let me just share this with you. Uh, here we go. IMF official, IMF board need to approve Greek deal before endorsed by IMF. Need more concrete debt relief details. So this whole euphoria is basically on the premise that we are uh, on the expectation, really, that we are going to get this deal done. Now, IMF still have to uh, endorse it. So it's anything could happen. How many times have we been into this in this scenario before where 
everything is a done deal, etc., etc. And all of a sudden, the market's obviously uh, uh, discount everything in, and perfection is discounted. And before you know it, the market then reverses sharply. So, again, we may well be set up for one of those scenarios, okay? But we are into that FIB 61 to 75%. So, this is a shorting opportunity from my perspective. I'm not expecting gap fill, given the fact that the Shanghai was certainly weak. And commodities, from my perspective, are into resistance as well, okay? 60-minute chart on the euro stock. You are into previous support equals resistance, okay? So, bear that in mind, okay? You do have an unfilled gap above at 3,120. Yes, that is a possibility. All gaps generally do. Uh, obviously, we all, I think we all know that, that uh, they generally tend to levitate uh, towards that. So, certainly, from my perspective, looking for a potential pullback. And then before we... Uh, if we do uh, attempt to uh, rally towards that uh, gap fill. 10 minute chart on the euro stocks at the moment from my perspective looks exhausted. We finished negative, we finished uh, fairly weak. Uh, in terms of gaps, let me just, just clean up my charts now. It's uh, given this uh, massive run in the last few days. Okay, so you have gap fill here and gap fill here. So from my perspective, looking for gap fill, given the fact that we've already put a bearish pattern into the close, you can clearly see there, you have the uh, bearish uh, consolidation type pattern, okay? And then looking for a gap fill there. Okay, so watch out for that zone. And you have consolidation here. And then obviously down we go. So a classical bear flag scenario, uh, given the fact that... Uh, and you're looking for a flush. That's basically what I'd be looking for. And then you're looking at activation down below 3010. Hopefully everybody's following me thus far. Okay, I need to do this quickly, folks. I don't want to make these videos long. Okay, so German DAX. Let's quickly go to the DAX. Daily chart German DAX at the moment. We're into that 200 MA. Into that Fib 61 to 75 percent retracement into resistance. 60 minute chart the German DAX previous support equals resistance. Looking for a flush below. Okay, so again looking to retest the breakout level on fill gap below as well. Okay, 10 minute chart of the uh, German DAX again looking weak. Your potential double top scenario here, folks. Looking at uh, exhaustion. Okay, again you have the unfill gap below. So looking to close those gaps. Okay, uh, and. Uh, the key gap is at 10.060. That's the one that you should all be potentially targeting if you are looking to open up shorts from my perspective, okay? Once we break this level here, which is around the 10.180 level, then you, the floodgates open, okay? You are looking for a potential gap fill. Again, watch out for that uh, potential tweet I did focus on uh, with regards to uh, a failure for uh, IMF. I'll read this out to you again, folks. IMF board need to approve Greek deal before endorsed by IMF. Need more concrete debt relief details. So it's all hodgepodge at the moment. That's the best way of explaining it. Okay. Uh, and again, we've had Mr. Fed Kashkari. Negative rates are perverse. Interesting. Uh, one of the last tools that the Fed would use. Okay. So again, talking down negative rates, obviously, uh, it certainly uh, is, uh, from our perspective, from my perspective, it certainly is uh, hawkish. Uh, to a large extent, uh, not hawkish, but basically bearish. Really, that's probably the best way of understanding it. And given the fact that it's bearish, then you are looking for potential uh, uh, a move lower. Now, bear with me one second whilst I just uh, sort this uh, uh, increase uh, levels, levels. Ah, oh, no wonder why. Here we go. Okay, that's much better now. So if I push that to 95, hopefully the uh, videos that you're receiving uh, or watching will, will certainly perform better as well. So, uh, yeah, okay, that's good. Apply, done. Okay, hunky dory. Okay, that's much better now in terms of uh, the volume, hopefully. Okay, so... Um, I was recently upgraded to Windows 10, by the way, folks. I was on Windows 8. It wasn't supporting my four screens. There was some driver issue. Uh, but thankfully, uh, Windows uh, have uh, certainly um, improved. And uh, everything, I upgraded to Windows 10 and everything was hunky-dory. Okay, so, yes, uh, German DAX, uh, unfill gap below. Watch out for that zone. Uh, I'm certainly biased bearish. Now, why am I biased bearish? Now, one of the main reasons is the fact that, uh, yes, I will talk my book. I am actually long the euro at this juncture, folks. And the reason why is because the horizontal uh, chart, uh, horizontal support in this zone. You've got the 200 MA just below. I don't expect 1.1 to be touched. And as we all know, a, a rally in the euro generally indicates what? It means exports become expensive. Exports become expensive. It's the anti-QE trade. Anti-QE trade, what happens next? Obviously, the European markets start to fall. So from my perspective, you are looking at the uh, end of this European rally given the fact that we have this falling contracting wedge pattern into horizontal support, looking for a thrust higher. A thrust higher obviously will trigger the uh, risk off scenario and down we go, okay? So your USD is, is basically telling you in advance that you're looking for a potential fall. Given the fact that we've had stronger German data, yes, it is bullish for the economy, but, but it basically means that the Germans will not be open to any additional QE, which in turn, folks, is bearish. Think about it, okay? Think about it. 
Think of it as a, from a central central planning or central planner's perspective, a, a central bank uh, individual perspective. So it, there's no need to do additional QE. If the Germans are happy, screw the rest of the Eurozone, okay? So again, that's basically how they interpret it, okay? Uh, again, uh, moving on now, because this video is getting lengthy again, apologies, okay? The um, the actual uh, FIB retracement on the CAC, you're looking at uh, FIB 61 to 75% again. If it does continue to thrust higher, then you are looking at this potential gap fill here, folks. Watch out for that gap. Uh, this is a gap that may well be filled. Okay, so again, what's the zone to watch? But the 200 MA sits just above, so therefore indicating a uh, risk off. Now, French job seekers have actually uh, declined, so again, that is relatively positive for the French CAC, and that will certainly keep the CAC supported to a large degree. Okay. 60 minute chart the French CAC at the moment you are into that previous support equals resistance zone you have the unfilled gap below as well so watch out for that 10 minute chart at the moment again double top scenario uh, is in in play again and you are looking at support here and then obviously unfilled gap uh, needs to be closed below so from my perspective it's a trade of the gaps watch out for those gaps below and I'm looking for them to be closed that's my interpretation okay let's go to the FTSE 100 now given the fact that obviously oil prices certainly uh, have helped the FTSE to a large extent. Now, the FTSE itself is under pressure given the fact that uh, we're looking at a, um, uh, the scenario of Brexit coming up, okay? Uh, from my perspective, remains weak and shall remain weak. Daily chart at the moment has a HNS formation, is into that FIB 61% retracement, retracement zone, okay? And looking to potentially move lower. So, my buyers will. Certainly remain bearish on the FTSE. Now, yes, we have made the gains, impressive gains. You are into previous support equals resistance at this 6 to 60 zone. So I'm looking for weakness on the FTSE itself. Back down to the 6 to 20 and 6 to 100 zone. Again, 6 160 may well come into play as well. So we'll keep an eye out for that. Okay, 10 minute chart, the FTSE 100. Again, you can clearly see that the zone at uh, or resistance at 6 to 70 has held all day. And that's expected to hold. I'm looking for a potential flush. Uh, looking for this gap to uh, certainly close at the 6220 zone. That's my initial target, okay, in terms of the uh, FTSE 100. Okay, folks, I think that's a market wrap. Be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs, okay, and goodbye now.